Howdy, and welcome to the Feed Bandit Podcast, where we talk all things hunting and introduce you to the most innovative hunting gear and services. Here are your hosts, Jimmy Byrne and Richard Kinchlow. Well, howdy, folks. Welcome back to the Feed Bandit Podcast. Jimmy here, and I'm joined with Richard. It's good to be back. It's the most wonderful time of the year. With those shotguns a blasting and bird dogs a yapping, why don't you drink a cold beer? It's the most wonderful time of the year. Woo! That's how it looked. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, that was amazing. <laughs> Hot diggity dog! It is that time. It is. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It's here. I can't believe it. I know it. I know it. Let's see. Time. So we're recording this a day after opening day, okay. and uh, it sounds like there's been some good reports down at uh, from Rancho Bandito, more or less, right? Yep, yep, uh, yep. I think everywhere, uh, well, yeah, now North Texas was, was pretty rough, uh, just because of rough, in quotation marks, because of all the rain that perfect we had. Timing on that rain. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, and they always talk about, I mean, for years, they've... They, <laughs> You know, the old tradition is, oh, opening day, you're going to get rained out. I swear to God, you, in the 75 years I've been dove hunting, I've never had an open day raining out. But I didn't want to jinx myself. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I remember that season. <laughs> it got rained out. It was terrible, horrible. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, man, it, it is here. And, and thank God. I mean, talk about, talk about one of the things that we all need as, as hunters and as Texans. We need an escape. From this reality, no more election, no more stupid coronavirus. Uh, all we no got, more uh, Lucifer brigades protesting. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. No more burning down car dealerships and destroying, <laughs> you know, the hardworking men and women's, uh, you know, destroying their lives by looting and all that kind of stuff. It's dove season, and and literally at this point, everything is right in the world. Um, yeah. So, absolutely. So we're yeah. we're gonna be out there day after tomorrow you're still going friday <laughs> yeah okay oh, yeah. for your first for the first hunt of the year uh, so it'll be yeah, and, and three have, four days after the opening actual opening day. now and i have horrible anxiety it's absolutely awful as if i didn't have enough crap going on in my life you know I, i've been trying to temper it i like haven't been looking at the calendar but you know when, when august 31st came around I, I just felt that anxiety. I'm like, oh, my God, are they going to be there? You know, when, when am I going to shoot? And, of course, what will end up happening is, God willing, on Friday I get to, I get to, to hunt a little bit. If I can make it out of work in time, I'll, uh, you know, I'll miss the first five birds, and then I literally will shave off a week, a week off my life stressing about it, and then I'll get back in the groove, and then we'll listen to some Texas high school football and drink some vodka, and it's going to be great. <laughs> oh, man, thank yeah. God it's here. Yeah, those – First several shots, you gotta get the rust off. You we know? do. Of course, really I always, I have rust permanently on me, so I. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's funny actually. You know, a lot of um, and then we'll jump right into some kind of the, the the tips and and hints and all that kind of stuff. But something that I, I'm surprised I remember this, but you know, every dove season when you go out there and you put your mojo decoy out there, we we tend to kind of forget you know the distances, even though we've been doing it forever. You know, and we'll. I swear to God, sometimes I end up looking at my mojo decoy. I'm like, wow, there you go, smarty. You put it at five yards, you know. <laughs> uh, don't forget that, that a lot of these birds, you know, have not obviously have not seen mojo decoys in over a year. Some of them may never have seen it. So, you know, you are not going to be effective uh, when I don't care what kind of shotgun you're shooting at, you know, five yards. You need that decoy at at least – 10 to 15 yards. You don't want those birds right in front of you because you will miss them. I mean, truthfully, you you don't, uh, you know, that that gun will not, op that, that shot, that wad will not open up in time to hit a bird that, that close. And, and that, that thinking and that strategy also works for when you've got dove or ducks flying right at you. You know, you would think, oh, the closer they are, the more fatal the shot, dude. Let me tell you, like shooting a buckshot at a dove or something. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, I mean, no, not even that. The thing is, is that you'll miss them completely if they're too close because the wad hadn't had time yeah. to open up. Yeah. Um, 
but it, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you got to think about it. Put your mojo out there and think about it because, uh, yeah, you want it out there far enough. That, that, that's for sure. Right. That's true. And, you know, if, the, if also, I mean, other than the wad not, not opening, I mean, how, how much faster do they seem when they're closer? Oh, God. No, anyway, it's so it's like if, you have, if you're like me and had, have a hard enough time leading them further out. Oh, it's, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like, terrible. Or, you know, the, the worst behind. Is, the worst is when you shoot, yeah, you're behind, and then you go shoot again, and then just because you're so frustrated, you go try to shoot a third time, like, meh, and then you, yeah. oh, God. Uh, <laughs> there um, goes uh, whatever, you know, 25, or, you know, what, a box divided by 25. Yes. Whatever that ends up costing, you know. And I guess yes. it could, you know, that would be an interesting thing to, you know how I, I used to I used to say, or I still do on occasion, like, oh, I wonder how many 12-ounce beers I've drank in my life, you know. Right. Same, right. like, eventually it'll be like, you know, I wonder how many shells I've I weighed. Thought, I, thought, how, we, what is it I thought we figured that out. We said, like, 12 million, I think. 12 million. Beer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, beer. Well, I, I got, I got a, little, a little, uh, little quiz for you. What is the average amount of shells it takes for – no, the average amount of shots it takes 100 before they get their first dub? I think that's it. Like, at the, right at the beginning of the season? Or just well, just in general. I, they, didn't, they didn't specify. And I think this is right. Oh man, okay. Uh, well, I'm guessing nine. Uh, wow, that's pretty close. Really? Seven, they said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seven shots. Yeah. <sighs> if if that was me, I, I I literally don't know what I would do. I I would just be so so stressed and so oh my god. Yeah. Well, I'm probably more on the nine side, and. <laughs> And Matt's probably well, on the 15 side. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, God, it, uh, I hear you. We, we have those days, and some people have those kinds of years. But, uh, yeah, well, let's, let's jump into some, some of the strategy and some of the tips. You know, I mean, I, there's, you know, unfortunately, there's only a handful of folks that I think that, you know, if, if they're first-time dove hunters, that they could probably go out and hunt, you know, yesterday on, on a Tuesday. So, I'd say a vast majority of dove hunters would actually hit the weekend. And it's funny because actually, you know, statistically speaking, a majority of dove hunters in the state of Texas will hunt one weekend and that's it, which is crazy. Oh, Whereas I, yeah, oh, yeah, opening weekend. Yeah, yeah I'd like to see the I graph. It probably falls off, but, you know. Oh, it, yeah, it does. It does. Whereas me, you know, you know, deer season, I'm like, yeah, you know, if it's, if it's legal to shoot, I'm on it. I love it. But, um, yeah, let's let let's talk about some of the tips and strategies and all that kind of stuff. I, I think the first one we'll talk about because it's really important, especially right now uh, with all this wacky weather that we're having. You know, back in back in mid August, you know, we were dealing with highs in the hundred uh, hundreds and and high nineties, um, and things were looking pr- I mean looking pretty good. Okay, I mean obviously you don't want super dry conditions but if you're tank hunting you're hunting over water like we like to or we have to uh obviously that bodes very well for us so um you know here we come right into opening day of dove season and all of a sudden we're dealing with massive cold fronts and and let me back up actually a week ago we had our first cold front and it brought down a a lot of rain okay now it didn't uh, talking about rancho bandito specifically it didn't uh, it wasn't a tank filler, okay? It's not like we got four inches of rain. It brought the level up, you know, uh, five feet or something of that nature. But uh, it was enough to clear out the dust. That wasn't a big deal. Fast forward to yesterday, uh, and and really yesterday evening, we get over five inches of rain. And so now – On opening have, day. Yeah, you know, and basically on opening day, yeah. So – now, uh, your tank hunting aspirations are really kind of in the dirt because a dove would just assume drink out of a puddle as they would the tank. So that becomes a real problem. So, you know, before you head out to wherever you're going to be dove hunting, um, you know, check for puddles, you know. And, of course, if you don't have sunflowers, uh, if you don't have, you know, a cut agricultural field where you can hunt, well, then, then stay by water. You never know, you know. Uh, but but I will tell you, I and and I, Jimmy, you can attest to this. You know, the hour success over water after a big rain um, has has been limited at best. And I've actually texted. I actually was on the texting my dad today, 
And I was like, please tell me that all the puddles from the five inches of rain that fell in less than a couple hours have dried up. And he's like, uh, no. <laughs> uh, you know, it was like, God of mercy, you know, so that, that's really going to screw things up. Now, something else that was very interesting with that front obviously came cooler temperatures, but what also came down with that front, okay? We had a lot of migratory dove, and that first front, my wife and I were down at Rancho Bandito, and we were covered in them. They, they were everywhere, uh, and you can tell they're migratory dove, not because they wear, you know, tags or have passports or anything like that, but they just look bigger. They look bigger, they fly a little bit slower, and they're in pretty big groups, so I was salivating already, and the fact we had about 15 teal. Uh, on the on the, the the main house tank of Rancho Bandito, so that's a real big indicator that you've had a, you know, you've had a migration. And of course, checking in with my dad yesterday, that was 15 teal, uh, multiplied many time over, and now he says there are tens of hundreds of teal on the lake right now. I'm like, wow, that's good. By you know, virtue of the fact that we can't hunt them, but <laughs> except for uh, a week, right? Yeah, yeah, except for a week, yeah. But he ended up getting into some of the, the migratory dove, uh, which, and, and it was over water before it started to really pour. Uh, this was last night, okay, and all the rain came in really after dark. Rained five inches, and they and rained most of today. Mm -hmm. uh, today they went out into a, a cut sunflower field. Tons of birds on the wire, but weren't a lot feeding. Uh, and it was cloudy and sprinkling a little bit. I, my experience with the rain is it just really screws things up. Mm -hmm. You know, especially for morning dove. I, I don't know what happens down south, but, you know, my my thinking is if it's raining or if it's sprinkling, at least me, you know, whip out the beer. Put the gun <laughs> down, whip out the beer. That's me. All right. Well, so just so folks un uh, understand <clears throat> how we're talking about this, as, as we're talking, we're talking uh, around the time that they, that group should be out there hunting right now, right? So they're sitting hey, on well, the field. Yes, 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 correct. Yeah, yeah, in fact, uh, by the time... So are uh, we going to get some uh, text update updates maybe as we're uh, we might. recording here? We might. <laughs> yeah, we might. And uh, I think there's a, there's a high probability that uh, my, my, my negative Nancy dad will be writing us back a one-liner like, skunked, nothing, unbelievable something of that nature well that just means that it'll be it'll be resting for us it's uh, true that's a couple very days true. that's very true yeah. yeah no that's that's a very good point so yeah. yeah i think a big big thing about this is though and it, it's easy to get kind of discouraged i think especially from our past experience sure <laughs> with the rain and everything and oh yeah i looked this morning <clears throat> at the with the weather because of everything that happened here last night right I held off looking down there yep. on the ranch to see what the forecast would be this weekend. And I looked and I saw, you know, you go on there and it has 50, 60% on one day or whatever, yep. you know, and I look at it and I, you know, the first reaction is like, ah, come on, <laughs> you know, like get a little discouraged or whatever. But yep. at the same time, I think a big, uh, big thing to do to remember for everyone listening is you never know. I mean, Right. Weather conditions could change. You're dealing yeah. with wild animals, wild yes, birds. Yes, yeah. You, know, that you never know. I mean, there's been times when we've gone out and not thinking anything's going to happen, and we limit, you know, or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, you're you're exactly right, and <clears throat> you know, I, I fondly remember one of those. In fact, it was the night that my grandfather passed away. Uh, you and I were out, and we we had set up in a, a little bit of a cut sunflower field. There was nothing coming in and we got bored and said you know what, let's drive down this road and we did and uh, it was it was a pretty dry September and we just had a little puddle of water and we absolutely smacked them and we we killed we limited out in, in 15 minutes it was incredible so now you're right you know don't get don't get down keep it up you know try to but but you know just remember where where they love to be you know don't think that you can go out there and sit in the pasture and uh, and, and, you know, and expect to do anything. Obviously, hang around those food sources, whether it be, again, the agricultural fields. Uh, uh, they obviously, they love, love sunflowers. If you've got some, or dead sunflowers, that is. If you've got dead sunflowers with a telephone pole uh, or, or any sort of wire above your head and near water, you, you're going to be in dove heaven. 
so, you know, watch, watch where you're going, watch the weather, and, and that'll definitely help improve your chances of having a good uh, you know, inaugural dove hunt, that's for sure. So what is it about the sunflower seed mm-hmm. that they love so much? Is it because of the, the way they can they use it in their crawl or something? Well, or? you know, it's, it's a good question. And, you know, the, we've got to remember that the sunflower is, is, a, is a weed. And, and so I think, um, you know, it does extremely well in, in, in dry, horrible conditions. And, and let's face it, sometimes in Texas here, when you've got a, a field or a parking lot that's grown over, okay, it's just not conducive to growing, you know, good old-fashioned native grasses. So what's going to pop up a weed? Right. Um, and, and so I think that, that the reason why they're so attracted to sunflowers is because that's just what they're used to eating. There's so many of them out there. Mm-hmm. You know, and then also I, I think it's the tonnage per head. You know, each one of those heads, you know, produces, you know, a good amount of little sunflowers. And, and, and that's the other thing, you know, for a lot of beginner dove hunters, you know, th- these are not the sunflowers that you eat while you're playing baseball. <laughs> you know, th- these things are really, really small. These aren't uh, David sunflowers? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We actually, we actually did hunt over the traditional mammoth sunflowers in Lubbock and, and, and did pretty good. But, um, you know, they really love those, those wild ones and the, the real small. And again, how do they see them on the ground? I don't know. I guess it helps when you're about an inch tall and you can actually see the ground. True. And um, they have pretty good eyesight. I mean, yes, they do. I guess there's a reason why we got to wear a camo and exactly. Tattoos and, Yep. Yep. Well, okay. I tell you what. Let, let's hop right into good that. Good segue. Into that's a good segue. Yeah. Yeah. So, so doves see in color. Uh, they see in color real well, and uh, they can detect movement. And I would say that, you know, one of the reasons why, besides just in general having issues of shooting a moving animal, but that people's hunts get foiled, if you will, is because they're they're out of position. They're moving too much, or they're they're not in some sort of camo. You know, and we don't. You know, I know you don't hunt in full camo, and I don't either, but we, we typically hunt in drab clothing. And uh, a lot of folks wear pants. We don't. We wear short, shorts and snake boots. And I got uh, camo yeah, shorts, shorts, however. Yeah, you know, I do too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I do too. So, yeah, you know, you got you to think strategically and, and dress strategically. You don't want to be wearing any bright colors. Obviously, nothing white. Now, of course, if you're in the public area and, and they require you to wear hunter orange, well, go ahead and just you know pray to God you've got some blind doves that are flying over near you. Uh, but but uh, you know one of the things that I really tell a lot of new people that are dove hunting is, is try to use the environment to your advantage. You know, so you know if you're sitting around a tank, okay, and it's just you, uh, if you can, and, and if the birds are, are using this pattern, flying like this. You know, try to, if you're hunting in the evening, try to have your back to the sun, okay? Because obviously, if you've got a bird coming back, coming at you, and the sun's in your back, that, that sun will kind of hamper their eyesight. Now, it's not going to completely, you know, assure you that you can, you know, fire up the band and start moving like crazy, but uh, it's definitely going to give you the advantage um, for a little bit over, over that bird. No what doubt. do you think about sound? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, you know we're t- we're typically up there, or at least you know when Matt and I sit up right. together, we yep, yep. We usually have a speaker with music blaring. Oh yeah, no, it is unbelievable. Like, are we here to party? Or are we here to shoot down? <laughs> yeah, and you know, you know, that's a good point. I, I don't know what I don't know. You know how dove here? Yeah, um, I I do know one thing, and they don't like shotgun blasts. You know. <laughs> They they certainly will uh, will flare at that. I, I definitely know that. And I wonder if that's more the blast sound. Is, or right. I get, you know, sound is a is a wave, right? So I wonder right, if yeah. it's more them feeling the the pressure change, uh, or if it's that's, the that's actual point. audible sound. I don't know. That's that would be point. an interesting. That's a good point. Well, and, and you know, thinking about the, this, thinking about it this way too. You know, when we're on the in, in a big tank, you know, that that's only you know. Uh, just a little bit full, you know, if it's down there in that bowl and you're shooting into a bowl, there's got to be some echo or reverberation or something right. like that. And, uh, so it's probably got to be a little bit louder, but hmm. um, yeah, but yeah, I just, you really got to try to use the environment again, wear drab clothing and, and, and you'll be in great shape. Uh, what about gear? I mean, gear, that, that's the, 
There, there's a lot of gear for dove hunting, I'd, I'd say. There can be. There can you, be a lot of gear. That's true. I, I guess with, as with everything, it's how far right. you can take it, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, obviously, you need a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, that's that's gear number one. Yes, yes. Well, maybe gear number one is earplugs, and gear number two is a shotgun. Yes. Yeah. Because I guess you could yeah. sit out there with other folks and watch them, but you still probably want to have earplugs. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a real good way to lose your hearing, not wearing uh, not wearing earplugs. And and I'll tell you, I use and a lot of our friends um, actually use those you know Walker game ears and stuff. Which if you're interested, in, they're actually on our website and, and our uh, Feed Bandit gear. Ones that we use, we use those a lot. Uh, I, I prefer to use plugs during dove season because it's, it's a little bit warmer. And the one thing that I do is when you're dove hunting with, with a group of guys, okay, obviously safety is a concern, but also you got to help each other out. You know, so the, the, the tank, the, the big water tank, uh, creek, pond, whatever, or pond rather, whatever you want to call it, we, that we hunt at, you know, we've got a hunter who sits on one of the corners and kind of faces the tank. And then we got several other hunters that are across the tank, and it's, it's a decent little distance, but they're facing out. So, you know, the person who's, who's hunting in the first position I talked about, you know, they're really responsible for telling the guys facing away, hey, guys, you got a bird coming over your back. And, and, and so in order to do that, you know, that person's got to be alive or alert and whatnot. But the other people, they, they you know, they got to either wear their muffs or they got to have something going on with their earplugs. So what I typically do is – since I'm right hand, I mount my gun like this. I put my, I sink my one earplug in all the way, and then I take my other earplug and I sink it about three quarters of the way in my ear. So yep. obviously, it's still protecting my hearing, but I can still hear. Right. Uh, and then obviously, when you got kids too, I mean that that's a big deal because you yeah. want to hear if something's going on, whatever. So. No, I do the same thing. It's yeah. just simple and easy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for a thousand years, and I haven't had any, you know, noticeable hearing loss or anything like that. Well, you, now, you don't have myself, to go in that far right. to really block out the harmful right. high, high pitch of it, you know. it's Right, right, right. <clears throat> yeah, so so earplugs are, 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 are definitely a, a must. Uh, I'd say the shotgun is probably next. Uh, you know, and, and, and people ask, you know, what, what do we use? Do we use the 12-gauge? Is that cheating? Listen. If you can shoot a dove, whether you're shooting a 12 gauge or a 20 gauge, that that's an accomplishment. It's not easy, and it takes a lot of practice. Uh, yeah, 12 gauge is just fine, you know. And I I recommend eight shot eight shot dove loads with a uh, 12 gauge. If you're shooting a 20 gauge, um, you can shoot eight shot as well, 20 gauge or seven and a half. Seven and a half are going to be a little bit bigger. I've actually prefer those for migratory dove because again. They're a little bit bigger, a little harder to bring down. I'd also shoot seven and a half if you're hunting down in South Texas uh, because you're going to be in the white wings. The white wing dove are a little bit bigger than the morning dove. Uh, we, we've, we got into some uh, white wings um, up near Rancho Bandito uh, a couple of years back, and it was amazing how the eight shots would, would kind of put them down, but, <laughs> but it, 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 it felt like we were running after a lot, or at least the dogs were. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my suggestion as far as, as far as guns are concerned, you know. Um, but but really make sure, especially if you're new, make sure you watch the loads that you're using. You know, a lot of people go out there and like, well, it's got a twelve on it, and we'll use it. Well, you could be using small game loads, you know, six shot, four shot, <laughs> and you will literally have nothing but chunks of meat and feathers if, if you actually connect with the dog. Why are these shells so expensive? They're, <laughs> they're... Yeah, yeah. Oh, a steel. Yeah. Oh. yeah, 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 I are steel. All right, so I, what are these turkey shells? I don't yeah, they're all, oh, God, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, oh, oh. It's nothing but feathers, yeah. Is it, yeah, yeah. it evaporate. <clears throat> yep, yep. I guess the nice. other thing, uh, yeah, go ahead. obviously you want to be legal, so don't forget to get your license, which <laughs> is on my agenda for tomorrow, so oh. I need to, I'm going to go do that. <clears throat> yep. So that's key. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't forget yeah, that, it. Like, that's definitely uh, that's definitely a needed uh, a needed thing. Uh, but a chair too. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a chair and then something to put your birds in. They're probably the, you know, and obviously water. You know, things of that nature. But you know, you it, a chair, in my opinion, uh, is real important. You know, some guys and and it is what it is. If the birds are really, if the birds are thick, the birds are thick, and, and you could be out there in the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile, and they're still going to come flying over you. You know, but. 
you know, a lot of guys hunt from the tailgate of their pickup, and boy, that that's nice and that's comfortable and all that. But I pref- we prefer Jimmy and I do a, a chair that's that's mobile, it swings, it's got good back support. So we use the Mac Daddy Caddy, and we've talked about that a million times. But the the Mac Daddy Caddy has got wheels on it. Our friends make fun of us. They make fun of us because they're jealous yeah. uh, that that they don't have one. And of course, they make all kinds of crass and rude jokes. But again, we would just. Oh. Water off of our little dove feather backs. Envy is the highest form of flattery. Oh, something. it is. It is for sure. So, uh, but but the but a, a cart system kind of like the Mac Daddy Caddy puts all your gear right there. Uh, because let's face it, if you're out there in the dove field, you know there, especially if you're hunting, you know on 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 public land and stuff, you may have a hell of a walk. Okay, and you got shells, water, chairs, decoys. You know. The Mac Daddy Caddy and, and, and systems like it give you the ability to be very mobile, uh, and, and that is absolutely tremendous. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that is that is that's very important. In our book, you know, we've got some friends who use the uh, almost kind of like the camp chairs, and, and that's good too. I mean, if you can shoot sitting down, that's fine. But for me, at least, I, I kind of shoot more leaning forward type thing, and. Since I'm fat and can't move very fast anymore, I um, it it, it would take a minute. I'd have to kind of, rrr, 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 you know, it's good. It'd be my a little chair, bit more support fire. than a camp chair. Yeah, a little more yeah, oops, yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, of course that's not my fault. I've got the COVID fat itis. Anyway, uh, it's your um, big bone. I am big bone. I'm husky. Yeah. <laughs> or or festively plump. Festively plump. God, husky is a great word. I mean, you don't hear that much anymore. <laughs> So if we ever come up with a clothing line, I, I swear we, we need to bring back Husky. Yeah. Husky. I wonder if we the have, other thing uh, I want the other thing I want to do is I want to start having men's clothes labeled like female clothes. I mean, you know, for example, like a size twelve in females is really like a forty eight in men's. You know, but they didn't do it because they don't make it feel bad, you know. So right. the new triple X is gonna be a thigh thick. <laughs> is what I think we're gonna do. So, anyways, we're we're gonna work on that. If y'all are interested in our clothing line, maybe a couple of years may never happen. Uh, but just to let you know, that's a little preview of what what's gonna happen. If we're, something if we're, coming down the pike eventually. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah, awesome. So that that is Those that are is basics, really. Yeah, no, it, it is. But I ultimately and lead. <laughs> Yeah, and lead. Yeah, make sure you lead those birds. Yeah, you more lead, more lead, more lead, more lead. Yeah, you go to Argentina and you'll hear that more times. Which we're supposed to be there right now, hmm. or last weekend, by the way. Was it <laughs> stupid Coronas? Uh, but yeah, no, definitely, you've got to lead those birds. You know, if you're if you're if you're following a bird, your barrel's got to be in front of that bird, and if you stop. You ain't gonna hit that bird. You gotta swing through that bird, um, and 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 like hitting the golf get, ball or, or exactly, ball, right? Yep. Yeah. If, if the sooner you get that in the head, the more successful you're gonna be out there in the field. Um, and, and don't get frustrated, guys. You know it takes a while. And listen, they're not all gonna be right to left, left to right. They're gonna be coming from over your back. They're gonna be coming straight at you. You know, so uh, practice makes perfect. But man, it it is just it is a lot of fun. It is a it is a, a deeply rooted Texas tradition that um, is is just is so cool. You know, I have I have fond fond memories of opening day of dove seasons and in, in, in small town Texas. And, and my dad and I and some of his buddies were hunting a field. Maybe it was out in Woodson or near Throgmorton, and we would go into town. And the hotels, little hotels, are packed packed with hunters and dogs and they're in tailgates and they're they're drinking beer and they're celebrating and and they're laughing and let me tell you man you cannot you can't get any more texan than that you cannot get that that's what it's all about you know the camaraderie um uh and of course the of course the other thing is 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 obviously being there were so many people in that small town you're you're supporting that small town which obviously is is one of the focal missions of feed band and is near and dear to both Jimmy and I's heart. Yep. Uh, absolutely. And speaking of along those lines, not only supporting, you know, small town or right. the feed store there or whatever, we also, you know, we do this to help uh, you know, other small hunting, you know, gear absolutely. makers and whatnot service <clears throat> providers to get out there. And you know, since it's dove season, we want to <laughs> 
remind you of one that we talked to uh, way back on episode 71 Mm -hmm. uh, from Dove Gear, the ultimate bird vest. Oh, yes. God, yes. So it's something to check out if you're in the market, if you're if you're experienced, but you're in the market for a new belt or right. vest or whatever, or if you're right. new, you know, uh, check out the, the ultimate bird vest uh, yep. from uh, dove-gear.com. Yep. Uh, or you can go to our website, look up episode 71, uh, where we talked yep. to uh, T- Terry Kohler, who owns uh, Dove Gear, and we talk about the all about the vest and dove hunting. Yep. So that's a good episode for folks to go back and uh, take a for look. For sure. At, you know, so... I tell you what, that that vest, and, and we, we talk about it on the episode. Again, I, I also encourage people to go look at it. That that vest is, is really en- encompasses everything that has been missed out on all the years. You know, they you know, typically when it comes to you know bird belts, you either got a bird belt or you got a bird vest. And the bird vests, you know, that they have, you know, they got the liners in the back and yeah, you, know, you can hold like four shells. I mean, they just have never been, in my opinion, been all that good. So you either have those or you have the big pheasant hunting jackets, which of course if you wore in Texas, you would die instantly of a heat stroke. And then you've got the the bird belts, which I grew up using. But well, one of the problems is when you're using, you know, of course when I was hunting on the stool before I was fat, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. My my birds would hang down, right? Or would hang down over the the stool. Well, now that I, I like to have a back because I'm fat, uh, you know, when you when you, you you got birds in your back, they smash up against right. me. I feel guilt. You're like, who help me. <laughs> you know, but 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 the good thing about the, the ultimate dove vest is the fact that uh, if I remember correctly, it's it's got so many pockets that mm-hmm. they really can be on the side. And I think they're adjustable. Right. That that thing is, you know what it is? It's like a dove tactical vest. Yeah, it is. If you take a look at it, that's what it looks yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet. It, it, it's a really cool deal. He's a good man, too. He's a nice guy, and uh, it's a great company. He is an absolute avid dove hunter. In fact, he may not even hear this because he's going to be out there in the field. Right. I have he's out. The, he's probably close to his limit right now. Uh, he's so lucky, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, funny to say that about smashing the birds. I When I wore the uh, the belt, yeah. I had to this, have the same problem, only I would just sit down. Yep. I'd always just sit on them because oh yeah oh yeah you know, it would fold under <laughs> me and, oh and, uh, God, every yeah. time and for some reason I couldn't get it through my head you yeah. know, like to get the habit of just flipping yep. it out so I could sit yep. down. I never you crush them click in my brain for some you crush them yeah and and that's like now with the Mag Daddy Caddy I uh, I hang my belt I just hang my belt right on one of my uh, on the handle so I got my shells right there and I can I can operate really quickly yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll tell you a story real quick. So back in, back at, at, at Texas tech, when we were hunting, we would, you know, we said a billion times, but for that glorious four and a half years, we would hunt damn near every day of dove season. Of course, the, the hunting out there because of all the grain crops is just unbelievable. But there were several times where, um, you know, somebody would forget their bird belt, you know? So I had a, I would always drive cause I had the truck. And so in my toolbox, I have, a, uh, I actually had a uh, a tool uh, a tool belt, you know. Don't know, ask why, because I never really did much carpentry. I think I wanted to look cool. Anyway, I had there my my dear friend Trav. He uh, he says, "Oh man, I forgot my I forgot my bird belt. I got my shells. I got everything. Oh, no problem, pal. Here you could you're welcome to use my tool belt." So he uses it, and we go out there and we just shoot them up. And well, what we would typically do is we would. Um, we got back to the house, you know, we would, we'd always keep our birds in our pouches, uh, because we didn't want, you know, the game wardens to, uh, you know, cause that if, if you blend them all together, the game warden can't tell anyway. So, you know, we were, we get back to the house and we, we'd pop the tailgate open and we, we'd start drinking a little bit and a lot actually. And, uh, you know, it's dark, right. And so we'd start pulling all the birds out of our bags, you know, well, you know, it, it's a dove and it's not it's not like it's a bald eagle you know they're they're small well i you know trav puts my 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 tool my tool bag back in my my uh, toolbox in my truck and you know no, we, months and months and months go by and i remember getting in there i think it was literally in the summer and we were out filling feeders and i get in there i'm like sweet jesus <laughs> what what is that smell and, and i'll tell you it it had become it <laughs> It was a different smell. It wasn't the, 
you know, rotting Galveston Bay type smell. It was, it, and you're going to think I'm nuts, but it smelled like Band-Aids. No, well, I, <laughs> okay, okay, I, I don't know. And, and, and so I, I, you know, Band-Aids, go smell a Band-Aid. It's not, it's not like repulsive. You're like, oh God, that's a very unique smell. Yeah. It's on what the down happened is, repulsive. yeah, yeah. My dear friend, my, my best friend of, of all time, okay. My dear friend had gotten a little careless, okay? Maybe had one too many whiskeys, <laughs> and uh, he had forgotten to put a dove you know, into the pot. So when I pulled that Band-Aid and stinky tool bag, our uh, tool belt out, sure enough, there it was. And it was this perfectly preserved, you know, mummified <laughs> orange dove. The thing had, it, and it was orange because of the dirt out in West Texas, but I think the heat and it was so deeply in there. They it like mummified it. Yeah. Uh, but Oh my God. And of course it was, it was light as a feather. It was like all the meat it, just it, somehow evaporated. Well, it was like the, like uh, the meat turned to jerky when it's probably like a, a dove breast oh, it turned into jerky is probably not oh. meat left. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a lot of fun. You know, I have a stinking suspicion Yeah. that that, Probably wasn't wasn't a mistake. <laughs> I never thought about that. I never thought about that. Oh, he he wouldn't dare waste. Oh, he know. wouldn't dare waste a bird. Now I can definitely see him putting, you know, a couple of dove heads in the in, in, in the truck. And in fact, he probably did that at one point. Well, I don't know. You know, if if the dove are that plentiful, then I think mm -hmm. you know, for going may one, have. Of, one of them for that would be worth it. <laughs> you know what? I think uh, we may have to uh, to approach him about that. <laughs> we'll have to uh, we'll have to interrogate him. So, well, I think uh, that's probably a good place to stop this one. Done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, one last thing. One last thing. Above all else, besides going out there having fun, introducing kids and the people who have not hunted before, be safe. Jesus, yep. don't be an idiot. You know, especially with kids. If if, if you're taking kids out in the field for the first time. Even if you're an experienced dove hunter, you've got you have got to not be passive with those kids. In other words, you have got to say, Tommy or Susie, Tommy or Susie Tech, <laughs> you guys cannot pass this I line. I Freddie if, or Susie Tech. Freddie and Susie Tech. Yeah, you cannot pass this line because if you do, you know you could and 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 don't hold back. Okay, uh, I'm assuming we don't have any real, you know, liberal. Um, uh, um, What's that generation of kids called? Progressives? No. A generation of, oh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, pansies? Yeah. The okay, pansy yeah, generation? pansy type people. No, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't have any of those people listening to this. So, you know, you're not the type that would get offended from yelling at your kids. But, you know, just, just be careful, man. There, that's, there's no doubt that that is the easiest way to ruin a good time for yeah. sure. Would know where everybody is. And yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Know where your safety is. Yep, and yep. Unload your gun. When yep, <laughs> yep, you're done. yep. And enjoy. You double check it three times, like I do, because I'm oh, yeah, I'm OC on that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, man. I mean, I I'm all about you know with the auto loaders. Uh, you putting my finger down, my pinky down there, and even though you looked, I I yep. still do it. You know, yep. you, you owe it to everybody around you. Right. <sighs> so anyway. All right, well, well, with that, uh, let's end it on a high note. Everyone have fun. Yes. <laughs> have fun. Yeah. Good luck this opening yeah. weekend. Let us know for sure how your hunt goes. You know, <laughs> For sure. Day. We really appreciate everyone listening, and if there's yeah. any new listeners, welcome aboard. Yep. Welcome to yep. the hunt. We're glad to have you. Yep. Uh, and please let us know uh, how your hunt went, how your opening weekend went. You know, send us an email, howdy yep. at feedbandit.com. Let us know. We'd love to hear. Uh, of course, we'll let everyone know how we, how we do next weekend. Uh, yeah. So that's going to be fun. That'll be coming up. And uh, nope. so if you love, if you like the show, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Please go on and whatever you listen it on, uh, you know, rate and review us. Uh, Please, and send it. To, uh, let your friends know about the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, that really helps to kind of spread the word. Regular listeners know know that you know we say our passion is you know supporting. Mm -hmm. Small town culture, supporting like feed stores, uh, you know, right. businesses uh, in those towns that really help us out. Uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, the smaller businesses in the hunting space, things of that nature. So we're really, you know, trying to get out there to help those folks. So 
you know, when you come on board and you listen, please do that as well. Good luck this weekend. Have a good one. And we'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks for listening to the Feed Bandit Podcast. If you like what we discuss on the show, be sure to sign up to our email list to get even more killer hunting ideas, tips, tricks, and exclusive deals on innovative hunting gear and services delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up over at FeedBandit.com or simply by texting the word BANDIT to 33777. See you on the next one. And remember, support your local feed store.